Welcome to the third version of Business and Technology Supper uh, by Marbles. And, and why we're doing this, it's a soft launch of the Marbles executive search that we've started doing uh, at the change of last year. It's great to have your people online. Uh, it's great to have you, Sami. You are, by profession, strategic designer. Yes. What type of a background leads one to be a strategic designer? Would you like to have the short version or the long version? <laughs> um, let's start with the short. <laughs> so, my background is in, in design, in digital, uh, 20, 24 years ago, roughly. So, starting from like back in the 90s, learning by doing, yeah. and progress into individual design, into interaction design, into consulting. Mm. And then for the past 10, 12 years, into concept design, uh, strategic foresight, futuring, all that kind of stuff. So, basically, progressing from making stuff, like the actual coding stuff. Yeah. into actually leading that stuff, leading the work, and then finally what I'm doing now is basically helping people to make decisions. Yeah. Very good. That's Very the short good. one. Yeah, yeah, no, I have to say, I, <laughs> I agree. Well, well, well put. Um, well, what's the introduction of the company um, you work for, uh, NordCup? NordCup is a uh, strategic design advisory. So we have our DNA very firmly in digital as well. So starting 15 years ago from making things. And at the same time, we were fairly senior back then already when we started. So we always had our own way of doing things, which we kind of like have become known for as well. So striving for quality and also kind of ask, being very strict about asking the hard questions. Not just like filling the boxes, but asking why, what are these boxes, why they should exist, and how do they work, things like that. So that's kind of long, long story short, we've progressed from uh, concept design, digital design, interaction design, service design, what have you, yeah. into what we are today is strategic design advisory. So we do strategy, and then we have a still really solid foot on uh, experience design as well. The business horizon has been clouded by this sad, sad war. Um, and thinking about the companies that are, op are operating in Russia and, and, and beyond, um, obviously, um, you know, there's a lot of companies that are reviewing their, re reviewing their strategies. Um, and, 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 and I would presume a lot of companies have, have been doing that previously as well. Um, a generic point of view, what should the companies that have started reviewing their strategy just now, you know, what's your take? Is it, is it ultimately too late to be changing the direction? How do you, how do you approach this topic? I don't know. I, I don't think it's, it's never too late, really. But uh, then again, the other way of looking at things is that uh, if it's now 2022, and if you still operate on annual fixed strategy, that inherently makes you slow. That, that's sort of like, that, that is not the way anymore companies should operate. So in any case, companies should have the awareness and ability to do living strategy. What's, what's living strategy? So, the living strategy, like, like the name says, is a way of looking corporate strategy, business strategy. And basically, there's, there are many ways of looking at that. There are many articles that have been written in the past years, or even decades, on like how to, how to design and implement strategies that are not fixed. So I guess the point is like, you have to be able to renew or inspect the decisions uh, on regular intervals. And uh, in annual strategies, like it's annual, it's yearly, once in 12 months, which, is, which makes companies really slow. So rolling intervals, uh, three months, one month, I mean, you could do that, even, even implement in a way that uh, is constantly a living thing. Yeah. You, 
kind of like, and for that you need capability to understand like different kind of direction scenarios as well. So what are the futures that might await you? So basically coming back to your example of Russia. So I would also say it's pretty evident in 2022, if you're a company with uh, significant relations and trade to Russia, you know, or you should be very well aware that you are in very volatile environment, right? So that means that uh, you should have scenarios to a degree to understand what are your options, what, what are the direction world and the trade relations, everything might go. And then when you understand the different possibilities, different opportunities, that makes you aware of the risks as well. And when you're aware of the risk, you can actually then be cautious about them. You can uh, build plans ahead of time. Exactly. And I, I don't know what what's happening inside, for example, uh, Finne at the moment, but I, I would suspect that they have, I would hope, they've done their homework in this respect earlier. Exactly. Yeah. I was, was thinking about sending a package today to... To Russia and uh, and the posts not working, UPS is, is not working and etc. So you know it's it is it is a dire situation in in terms of their business. You know of yeah. course that are have been operating there. Uh, thinking about kind of like this risk scenarios and, um, and 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 what we have now currently taking place. Um, you know Finland being close to Russia and 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 and, and people are concerned. Um, you know, for the fate of the U- Ukraine country, but of course, you know, of you know Finland as 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 well. You know, about companies, can companies overdo crises? Then, you know, kind of like, is there a chance that a company starting to constantly fret about, okay, what's going to happen? Yeah. That that might you know make the company to lose its edge. Yeah, easily. I think uh, we almost did that during the pandemic. And I, I suspect there are many, many others who've done as well. So basically, it's very easy for the leadership to get into this sort of survival mode. And in, instead of actually being open and looking outside, when does the need for surviving end? Yeah. And having understanding, like, what, does it, what, what does it mean externally? Where do I need to survive or can I actually start thriving? Where's the, sort of like, where's the kind of decision point in that? It's really, really easy to stick in the survival mode. And just like beyond, like beyond recent events, I guess if you have your eyes too fixed on competition for the market, for trends, any singular slice of the big picture, it's very easy to get sort of like get attached to that and lose the sense of like what's, 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 what's coming next, what comes after that. And then when you look into like what's, on, what's now on your table, it's essentially you end up putting out dumpster fires constantly. Um, where would you start if a company would, would want to start growing? What would be the key elements to look at? It's a really good question. Uh, obviously, every company is different. That's like stating the obvious. But... Uh, that's actually that's very close to the work that I, I and we are doing at the moment. So, working with our large companies, almost like incumbents that are on traditional industries. So, what we do with them, we all very often first try to understand what's going inside the company. So, what are the sort of what are the hidden narratives? stories, beliefs within the company, and how do they match on what the company states externally? Mm. And that's where you get like, <clears throat> in, the, in the sort of root cause of like, why does not change happen, for example? What hinders the pot- potential innovation, for example? And then you can start looking externally into the customers, into the, into the existing customers, into the market. Like what are what is there? What what is the company really good at? Well, what are the sort of most talented, skilled people, most driven individuals or teams in the company doing? How are they thriving and why? And understanding that kind of helps you to form 
better picture of like what is the company actually good at, and then comparing that into like what did, what is the story they tell internally, externally, uh, what is their business like, how is the business doing, and uh, coming back to sort of why why and how we are different from uh, kind of management consultants, yeah. we very often we help companies and individuals make decisions, but we don't. And we can help them to make the solution as well. But we very rarely offer them ready-made solutions because they, they need to be worked together from within the company. And then you have the ownership, then you have the drive internally. And then there's a lot of potential for great things. And I, I mean, a more sort of practical level, you can start looking into in the company customers, what kind of customer segments they have, what kind of latent needs there? Is there any unmet needs and, and things like that? Yeah. Um, you've been working with um, the Helsinki City and the key Helsinki travel and business agencies lately. Yeah, so, well, lately, a year and a half ago. Yeah. So before Helsinki Marketing, the organization who runs my, my Helsinki.fi, yeah. they merged with Business Helsinki to become the Helsinki Partners recently. So, half a year, rough, a few months into the pandemic, mm-hmm. they reached out, and uh, obviously, being a an organization that does city marketing, yeah. and uh, they had just finished their strategy. All right, so tourists, business visitors, come here, come yeah. here. That kind of thing. exactly. Everything now we've, we've uh, got everything shining. <laughs> yeah, everything everything was shiny, and then. Yeah, the borders were closed. So they were in, like the British say, they were in a bit of a pickle. <laughs> and uh, reached out like, how, let's, we want to, they wanted to learn how to use for, strategic foresight yeah. and understanding of what are the sort of like, what are the opportunities they could tap in, in the market beyond the COVID ban- pandemic. Yeah. So, we worked with them in sort of like co futuring process. Mm-hmm. So kind of like instead of not just like getting the brief, going somewhere, coming back with shiny things, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we facilitated a series of sessions with them where we kind of helped them to understand what are the basic concept of, concepts of foresight, for example. Like what is a weak signal? Mm-hmm. What, what is a team? Yeah. And how, what, what do you do with them? How do you find them? How do you gather them? And obviously, it's really hard to go from like zero to 100 within like just a few months. But at least they, they got an understanding of what does it mean. And meanwhile, we help them to synthesize what they have, to give, kind of like put things in the buckets, give them names, uh, work with them to understand what, what do those teams mean. In, okay. in healthy context. And then they went back, uh, did their own share and translated that into their, what do they know yeah. about their business? Yeah. And then we did another round with uh, all of, not all, of, most of the uh, healthy city partners, so local companies from anywhere between like the Messukeskus Fair Center to local boat renting companies yeah. and got their input, uh, helped them to understand the whole thing, how does it work? And then basically made that in the six strategic teams, starting from a security, open space, quietness, and I can't remember all of them, but kind of like playing the strengths of what we have and yeah. what we know. And kind of like crystallized that into a storyline in, in the kind of like concept or marketing video for them to use internally and externally as well. Yeah. And uh, eventually... We, that's kind of like where our, our responsibility stopped. But eventually, I suspect some of the stuff found, found its way into the uh, Helsinki partner strategy and even, even city of Helsinki at large. Or, I don't know, there was those sort of like kind of obvious strengths that we found with them. That uh, they, there are many ways to come up with like things like, all right, Helsinki is the city of silence. For example, yeah. if you go to the archipelago, it's it's silent. 
there, yeah. which, is not, which is an advantage to many, many other cities as well. But yeah, kind of that's what we did. And uh, as, with, as it often is with our work in strategic design, there's no sort of like, there's no one single web service or app or kind of minute outcome. Yeah. But instead of, it's, it's more about kind of putting things in motion and growing the understanding capabilities within the company itself, that they can actually embody yeah. the discovered knowledge and put them into their own work and try through that. Yeah, leverage their understanding yeah. and yes. skills. Very good. And I'm thinking just kind of like how you know, strong and analog to the current times, mm. you know, there is kind of like the setting you know, that they had mm. nearly two, 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 year, two years ago, kind of like, you know, facing the unknown mm. and then trying to understand and re, kind of like uh, re-establish where to go. Yeah. This, this whole supper series has been sort of formed around the question, which comes first um, in new tech ventures? Mm. Is it the business idea or the, the tech solution? Yeah. And, uh, and, 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 you know, I, I see hard times trying to get any other answer from you than the business idea. Or how do you see this topic? I, I would actually, if you don't mind, I would actually break that question. Sure, go for it. I think the human need should come first. Elaborate, please. So there's no business without paying customer. There's no, well, there can be technology, but in order to be viable, it needs a use case. So that's why we need to tap into the human need yeah. and find, find the, what is often the paying customer or the untap, unmet need, whatever's out there. Strategic design is about getting the right people in the same room or space and helping them to make decisions by uh, facilitation, visualization, communication. And then comes the sort of like hard part, which is the integration. So how to actually integrate the acquired knowledge and made decisions into the organization. That's kind of like, that's where you make, make the work stick. And that kind of like, that, it's, it's, that stuff is hard. It's like, it's difficult even for us. Every organization is different. So we kind of like, my colleague Jutta Johansson talks about a uh, hamburger. So that's like the top bun is the strategy mm -hmm. and the bottom bun is the operations. Yeah. And there's the beef in the middle and strategy design is the mayo that makes everything stick together and makes things taste good. Perfect. <laughs> I think it's soon time for a hamburger. I think we've used our time. Many thanks, Sami, for, for that wonderful, wonderful talk.